button. Are we? Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the Grown Ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. Thank you so much and happy Wednesday to everybody. Uh, we're so excited to have you sitting here at the Grown Ups table with us. And as always, we like to tell you, make sure you like and subscribe uh, to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, everything. The more you uh, like and subscribe, the more we get to go out in the algorithm, have fun, make new friends, and spread the word and joy at the Grown Ups table. Now, uh, today uh, we got an incredible show. Got an incredible show that uh, we've been promoting all week. We're very excited about it. Uh, And like I said, right now, I want you to make sure you are sharing this link because I am beyond excited to be uh, doing this show today. And without further ado, John, why don't we bring out our guests? All right. So uh, we have been trying to get this guest on the show for quite some time. He is a busy man. He does many, many things. He's produced shows. He's been in shows. And he's been in one of the shows that we all love the most. And that's Nick Arcade. Anybody who is in their late 30s to mid 40s knows what Nick Arcade is. They grew up watching Nick Arcade. They played Genesis. They played Nintendo. And they watched this host, this charismatic, full of energy host, dazzle us week after week with his game knowledge and his energy. And that man I am talking about is none other than Phil Moore. Bring him out. I'm at the breakfast table. What's up? What's up, guys? How's it going, Phil? Hey, man, John, Jesse, it's good to see you both. Good to see all you right. too. Really glad, glad we're able to make this happen. Now, first of all, I got to clear up something because you just said, "Oh, we've been trying to get this going for a long time." The pandemic. I'm sitting here playing with my navel. Hey, John, can I be on? Go to hell, Phil. We got things to do. I got a kid to feed. Oh, Phil, I've never you rejected you. Talk about you. video games. Get out of here. My little girl can't. So I'm glad that um, I'm glad though that we're finally um, you know, able to get together. I again, I said, hey, can we get together? John is like, no, you, I, I gotta. I'm at work right now, and uh, I can't let them know that I'm doing the Ixnay on the DL. You know, right now, right now, he is in the break room that's outside of the men's room at his job, working right now. So, like, don't even give it that BS. Like, oh, you're trying to get a for long time. No matter where I was, I had this MacBook. I could have sat down any damn way and talked to you guys. So You're a busy man, Phil. I, I didn't inter- <laughs> want to interrupt your, your production and all that fancy stuff you do out there in Hollywood. So, uh, you know, <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to wait until we had the right time. We, we did have you booked last year when we actually – we're in the uh, kind of in the beginning stages of the show, um, but you know there were a lot of uh, events that happened last year that were very impactful to a lot of people. We were going through a lot, and we decided to take a break on that because there were just kind of more important things to focus on. Yeah, and, yeah, and everybody. By the way, everybody, I was joking. These two guys, I know. they have been busy. I have been busy, and yeah, we were scheduled last year. But I remember when we talked on the phone. I actually had a hard time. I was working on a show from home and I remember actually calling in saying like, can I have like a day? Because right now, you know, my job, no matter what it is I'm doing is to do something that's entertaining, that's fun and that's funny. And I literally said like, I don't feel funny right now. You know, I don't mm-hmm. feel fine right now. My brain is wrapped around. I have, I have my serious filled face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as opposed to my happy filled face on because there was some crazy stuff going on. We all know it. We all lived through it. Um, but, uh, but I'm glad that um, it seems like things if the, you know, the circle has gone around the, the planet another year. And uh, <laughs> I mean, the sun around the sun, around, you know, the planet, the sun, we have we completed evolved. an orbit. <laughs> Another year, an orbit, yeah. And so here we are. So this, uh, it's good. It's good to be together, guys. Fine. And I'm and I'm I'm just tickled to death that you were able to be here for us. This is like I said, it's been up in the works for quite some time. We always have such a good time, and we wanted to really bring the energy and and you know let you kind of talk to to everybody and and kind of let them know more about you and your life and kind of what led up to what we all really know you for and what we really should be looking for that you're doing now. And then of course at the end we're going to talk about our favorite topic, Phil, which is Star Wars. There you there it is. There it is. <laughs> um, but you know, it's interesting. It was this show. You know, I, I I got back from working on a show. 
I was out of out of out of, out of state for a while. And when I got back, I finally had time. So it was last week that I that I stalked you guys on your on your you other did. show. You, uh, you were talking about the what ifs, and it's funny yeah. because I started binge watching binge watching them because I hadn't had a time to check them out. So I was like, well, let me like get up and check it. And I, I you know I watched the, the ones that were available. Then I saw that y'all were talking about it. And I'm like, let me stick my toe in the pool here, <laughs> and uh, because because I have a, I have a little bit of time right now, which is really good. Uh, and that's really what I've been doing since I got back. It's like just catching up. I mean, the first day I got back, I'm like knocked on my son's door, walked in, and just said, "I'm like, how are you doing? I miss you, man." Because I was gone <laughs> for like two months. Man. I was and gone for two months. We're actually going to talk about a little bit later what you were doing and where you were and, and all the fun that you got to have in that <clears throat> beautiful place that none of us were at. So, <laughs> <laughs> look, there, I got to tell you, though, there is there is an actual truth to being stuck in paradise because <laughs> it, I was in Hawaii, man. But like, you know, it's COVID time. So as a production team, you you all have your zones and you all have your bubbles. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there are two days in which I had fun. Fourth of July. Okay. And then yep. the, the the Saturday after we wrap, we wrap late Friday night. I was flying out Sunday. So in that Sunday, they're kind of like, look, we don't care if you go get syphilis now. Show's done. Go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had fun on the 4th of July and I had fun the Sunday before I flew back. Um, but other than that, it was kind of like looking at paradise through a hotel window and through an <laughs> office window. And you can only hang with like the, the people that, we're in your department. Mine was the, the the challenge and game team. So it's five of us. We had to travel in the same vehicle. Uh, we could eat by ourselves. Or we could eat as a group, but we couldn't go out and do stuff. So it was really weird. It was kind of it was kind of like a, I, I felt very Gilligan-ish. You know what I mean? Mm. Kind of stuck in paradise for a little bit with some really nice people, couple nice look, a couple nice ladies. But <laughs> all in all, just holding my own. <laughs> yeah. You were still there, Phil, right? You were still yeah. there at least. Mm. You know, we're here in Ohio, so I mean, there you yeah. go. <laughs> Which you have been to. You have yes. been to Ohio. <laughs> I've been to Ohio. I've been to 49 of the 50 states. I've already well, okay. decided that. Before we get started, what's the one okay. state you haven't been to? Alaska. Okay. I thought already you were that. Okay. Yeah. And already and already made a decision after this trip uh that uh next summer. If the world is, you know, still open, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like having a Disney pass. Oh, I got it. But can I go? Um, <laughs> if the world is still open, I, I want to uh, hit Hawaii. They say next summer is perfect. So that that would be the last check off my bucket list. And uh, I'm jealous. Yeah. All 50 yeah. states. That's great. I, I would. No, dude, I would all Nickelodeon. It was from the personal appearances, the tours, sure. everything that they would send us out on, you know. You think I could afford to like go around? Do you think that I put on my list? You know what I want to do, baby? I could go to New York. I could roll in Chicago, but Ohio, baby. Yeah, That's right. Really Montana's <laughs> sounding pretty good. But right I know, now. but you know what though? But you know what though? Look, look, look. A lot of people don't know this about me. Like I love funk music, and mm -hmm. like Ohio, Cleveland. Oh my gosh, that's where all the best funk bands came from. Absolutely. I would go there just to. I would go there just to have a beer at one of the bars and listen to some music. You know. Well, mm -hmm. next time you're in Cleveland, I'll meet you there. And I'll buy All you right. that beer, Phil. Nice. All right, cool. Yeah. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> well, before we get too much into this, I want to kind of actually roll it back a little bit, right? So right. you're here with us. We're all together talking for the first time. And, you know, we really want to kind of get to know what led to what, you know, the main topic is obviously going to be Nick Arcade because that's what you are very famous for. But we want to know what led you to that. Nobody just walks off the street and gets yeah. a host job on Nickelodeon during its prime of the orange years, right? So yeah. walk us through how you got to that point. What were you doing before? What kind of led to that? And how did you ultimately land that gig? Because that's a very interesting story. All right, so I owe it, it, the, the, ultimate, the ultimate turn, the ultimate thing that caused the timeline to go askew uh, <laughs> is I owe the two things. One is the late, great Dick Clark. Mm -hmm. And the other is a big steamy pile of elephant crap. I mean, it was, uh... <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Uh, I started doing stand-up comedy, and I, you know, I was I was in Florida going to school. That's how I got from from Maryland down to Florida. Going to college there um, while I was where I got a job and we ended up doing stand-up comedy. Okay, so that's the quick quick to get into stand-up. Um, and then found out I got married and I found out I was going to be a dad and anybody who's a dad, man, you know, first, first child 
stand-up comics, you're on the road all the time. So I didn't want to be on the road all the time. And it happened to be at that moment that the Disney MGM Studios was being built built and Universal Studios was being built. And they weren't just gonna be like theme parks only. They were gonna be actual working sound stages. They were gonna be shooting real TV shows. And um, I'd been to tapings of TV shows in my life and I realized that the person that does the audience warm up is a stand-up comedian. So just through my stand-up connections, I got an interview with, with, uh, with uh, Viacom, which owned MTV, and I started doing audience warm up for a classic game show that was on MTV called Remote Control. Yes, there it is. There it is. There it is. Yes. Dude. So hosted by the late, great Ken Over, Steve Trekis, uh, uh, Colin Quinn, wow. Adam Sandler, Dennis Miller. I mean, that does I bad, forgot uh, Colin Quinn was on that. Dude, all of those cats were on that show. Yeah. And I was, doing, I was just doing audience warm up. And the year that, um, that I decided to make that decision to try to get into that was when they were going to be shooting their uh, you know, MTV, MTV Spring Break, and they were shooting in, in Florida. And even though Spring Break, the, the festivities were going over in Daytona Beach, they decided that, yo, let's do the, um, let's do the, uh, the, uh, the uh, TV show just uh, like an hour down the road at this new studio they're building in Orlando. So that's how I got introduced in the television. It allowed me to do audience warm up and it allowed me to stay off the road. I was still doing stand up, but I just drive in my car and go to work like a regular Joe. Drive back home. Yeah, yeah. You go. that's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Right, right. And so, so um, uh, once that show got done, by that time, a lot of other shows, you know, these brand new studios. Every time you turned around, a new show was coming in the shoot. And instead of going through the hassle of let's find an audience warm up guy, they would just kind of go, "Well, that guy did a good job. Who's that guy you had? Still more? Give me his number." So it was really neat. It was the, it literally was wow. right place, right time. Wow. Because I would finish yeah. on a show when it would wrap, then another show was about to start up, and they would go, "Can you come and do this?" And I'd be, "Yes, my wife is eight months pregnant. Yes, I'll be there." <laughs> so it allowed, me, it allowed me to stay home uh, and still do stand up and, and not have to like run around. So ultimately, it led to me after my son was born, uh, I continued to do stand up because now I want to be home. You know, want to be home with the family. And I was hosting. I mean, I'm sorry, I was doing audience warm up for one of the earlier reboots of Let's Make a Deal. Um, oh. It was, they, it, they, they brought it back and they shot it at the Disney M. Jim Studios and it was hosted by first Tom Hilton. Then they brought back the Monty Hall. I got a picture with the dude, man. Oh, nice, and, um, very nice. Yeah, man. So I was, I mean, that's all I was doing. But at that time, the show was a Dick Clark production. Now, Mr. Clark would come in all the time. I'd never see him, you know what I mean? I'm the guy that comes in like last minute, when the, <laughs> when, right before they load in the audience, and and do my shtick and do the deal and when the show was done get out i didn't meet the big wigs i didn't meet the execs so one day we you know one day we had done our, our whole episode and they get to the they get to the big deal and 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 uh I, the stage manager calls me over and he goes hey phil um i'm gonna need you to stall for a little bit can you stretch it a little bit i'm like dude no we that, it's the big deal is the last i've done all my bits right i'm out I've done all my bits. <laughs> I got nothing else to say. Normally, do the big deal. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. You want me to? How long you want me to stretch? I need you to stretch for like 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, Dang. wow. I'm done. My material. I've done everything. I go. What happened? He goes. Well, that last zonk prize that we had. Yeah, the big elephant. Yeah, he took a big meaty steamy pile of dump <laughs> right on the back. It was. A, remember Jurassic Park and, and yeah. Jeff Goldblum goes. Yeah, that's one big pile of shit. That's what was going on backstage. Oh. <laughs> Live studio audience, 900 people from, from 12 year old kids to 80 year old blue hair grandmas. And oh, you can smell the funk, the whole funk. And they had to clean that mess up. Oh, wow. And so I had to stretch to give them time to clean up everything, get the stench out of the way, then set up for the big deal before we could even get back to shooting the show. Wow. So. Uh, I, so this is when I learned how to really ad lib and improv because I really I'd done all my material, but I'd also been with these people getting to know them for the last 45 minutes. So it was like, even though my material was done, I'd already found out that this is, you know, uh, Bob, Sue and grandma from Ohio. And I already found out that this is does uh, Steve and Laura celebrating their 10th anniversary. So then it, I just started doing some stand up stuff. But like I started to focus on the audience, not just do a generic "I am the warm-up guy," but I started like really mixing and mingling and talking about them and playing with them. 
Yeah. And 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 we end up having a blast. I mean, like big laughs. I was having fun. They were having fun. So here's the deal. Um, the stage manager comes over. He goes, "Okay, Phil, we're ready to go." I'm like, "Terrific!" <laughs> and uh, I said, "Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I just found out the poop is off the floor." And everybody <laughs> like, <"Dear." laughs> and then he goes, "Then he goes, come here, come here, come here." Um, and I go, "I just, I need you to introduce Dick Clark." And I was like, "What the? Cuss? Oh, wow! What?" Wow. He said, "Yeah, Dick Clark. Dick Clark would like to say thank you to the audience for being so patient because we have detained them." For 20 extra minutes, we would get the audiences from the theme park. So these people, even though coming there for an hour was part of the attraction that they decided to do, we've now held them captive for like almost, you know, an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. And they paid big money to go do Disney, you know? And so he wanted to come out and, and, and just thank them for their patience. So I, you know, I ad lib it, ladies and gentlemen, you know, ladies and gentlemen, blah, 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 all wonderful platitudes. Mr. Dick Clark, and he comes out. And this is the first time I've ever laid eyes on him. I know he's wow. in the building every day. Yeah. I know he's up in the control room every day. Never laid eyes on the guy. I hand him the, 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 uh, the, the microphone. He sticks his hand out. I'm like, okay, great. So it's okay to shake his hand <laughs> if you don't know. You know, you know you, some yeah. people are like, Howie Mandel, don't touch me. You know? Right, don't um, touch me. Yeah. But, but he sticks his hand out. I go to shake his hand. And when I go to pull and walk away, he holds on to it and pulls me back. And he says to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, listen, most of the time when catastrophe happens, we're up in the control room freaking out. I gotta tell you, I've never had so much fun with a mishap than I have in watching this young man right here. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. give it up for Phil Moore. Wow. And wow. He, that night, I never really wanted to do TV. I was happy with what I was doing. I was, I mean, I was living in Orlando. I was making industry money, living in my own backyard, making, you know, tourists and the studio audience happy, doing stand-up. I could see my 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 ex wife and my baby. I was I was I was happy, but when that happened, I literally went home and called my agent and told her the whole story. And I said, I don't know if if Dick Clark kind of gives you the attaboy, <laughs> maybe you should be doing more. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For real. And absolutely. so that that's where my brain went. Like maybe I should be doing. Maybe I'm settling. Maybe I think I plateaued. You know, maybe personally, I took a life plateau when I still should have been reaching for the next step. You know what I mean? And it took that. And so that's when she, that's when my agent started sending me out on auditions. And Nick Arcade, honestly, that's the only part that's not interesting. That was just another audition. Anybody has ever heard stories or, or, or gone out for an audition, you get the, the size, which is a portion of the script. Then you go in and you read the people behind a table with a camera hmm. and you're talking to it and you're trying to like read and look, read and look, read and look. <laughs> you're trying to do the lines perfectly and you're crossing your fingers that you get a call back to come in and do it again. Because what a callback is, you know, they see a whole bunch of people, then they whittle out some people and they have a smaller group. Then you have another callback because they whittle out some more and they have a smaller group. That's literally what got me thinking, let's do this. Dick Clark patted wow. me on the back because I kept people entertained after Element Elephant stunk up the building. That's an amazing story. Like, how many people can say that they helped – avert a crisis with a live studio audience and ended up meeting Dick Clark and then Dick Clark validated them in front of um, everybody. Wow. Haynes, look, and I'm going to be serious. I'm going to be more serious face again. Yeah. Here's my serious face again, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Which is why it's important to like be kind to people, y'all. People were getting buck wild, you know, last year and it's still yep. a little, little whacked in the head now, but it's important. Watch what you say. Watch how you speak to people. If you can be kind, be kind. Because you never know if those words that come out of your mouth, how the effect it'll have. It literally took the rudder of my life and tilted it yeah. and made me go in a different direction. And it yeah. was a positive direction. And that's why I talk to people. That's why when people go, you want to do that guy's you know, podcast? Yeah, why? Because you know what? A kind word was something that, that affected my life mm -hmm. permanently in a positive way. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, you, you, you always got to pay it for it. I literally lived firsthand. Somebody paying something for it to me, and it changed the course of my life for the better wow. for the rest of my life. Well, I can I can say that you are one of the most genuine people I have ever met, and that was one thing I you know I mean I, I didn't 
know you until I actually met you in person. I only knew you of what I saw of you. And the first impression I had when you were standing at the bottom <laughs> of the escalator at the baggage pickup and you looked mad because I wasn't there and I was sitting in a chair right in front of you. And I was like, okay, that's Phil. I got to get up. And you're just like looking at I'm like, hey, Phil, it's John. You're like, whoa, John. Like, and it was just boom. It was on. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, my God, yeah, this dude. guy. Oh, like, man, look. Just click, oh. man. I, I got a mad resting face. I mean, that's why <laughs> that's why I got these lines right here from smiling so much. Because when I'm not smiling, wait, check it out. Here's me not smiling, right? Hang on a second. Oh, <laughs> perfect. I and, love and you're it. like, oh, that 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 nigga was going to rob us, right? That, that's a mad face right there. <laughs> <laughs> My resting face. Oh shit. My resting face. Is oh. kind of a mad face, you know. So that's why you thought, like, oh man, he's mad because I'm out here. I, I know. I'm I was. Like, I thought he was mad that I, was, I wasn't nope. there, even though I was sitting right in front of him. <laughs> no, nope. I was wasn't mad at all. This is just my brain had actually like settled down for a minute because it takes a hard, just a long time for the riddling poster child to settle down. <laughs> I had settled down, and I was just like standing around, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hey, welcome to yeah. Ohio. <laughs> hey, there he is. You know, so yeah. But oh. yeah, it, it, it is interesting. Somebody posted it, put up something a little while ago. It's really cool, though. You never know what will springboard your life into something else. And also, you also, and, and, and with that, um, you also have to understand about springboarding. Um, sometimes the springboard isn't necessarily a great thing. Mine was a big pile of elephant shit. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for that elephant shit, we may not be sitting here today. You That's never broken. know, Wesley's ever, what great things can be come from unexpected places. And, and and so so don't look at it and freak the heck out. You know, you, it could be that thing that's going to turn your life around in a positive direction. And as you go through whatever it is, you know, make sure again, like make sure you you keep a kind word in your mouth for people. Because again, the people you encounter, you don't know how it's affecting them or how you are affecting them, which will translate to what they say to you. I completely agree, wow. Phil, and that yeah. is amazing advice for anybody, and I think if we had more of that in the world, we would at least be inherently better than where we are now, so that's very important. I, I, I agree. What I want to do now is, because uh, we kind of already led into it, right? We kind of transitioned already. So let's just move right into it, Jesse. Rip the band-aid off. We're going into Ow. Nick Arcade. And look, oh my Phil. Gosh. I'm getting the Manzilla. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Phil. I know that I know that you said it, it's not really an exciting story of, of how you got cast on Nick Arcade, but it actually is. Okay. So, okay. you know, you were, you were, you were talking to your agent. You're like, I want to go into television. This is, I, you know, I got bit by the bug. I had this experience. This is what I want to do. I'm passionate. I'm focused, got the energy, got the laser vision on. So mm -hmm. how did you initially get the audition for Nick Arcade? Well, um, it's, it's sort of, it's it, it literally your agent, your agents, agents get breakdowns sent to them. Uh, of, of types, uh, depending on the project. And Nickelodeon was in the process. No, they'd already just built their studios in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I'd never, you know, I'd never been to it, but you know, and so um, they were, but, but Viacom was about to move all of their major future for Nickelodeon was to have the majority of their shows in one place mm -hmm. at the studio. And so, look, look, you see me, like you said, this is me all the time. It's something that was interesting. I, I've, I've I've gone to like, you know, barbecues and like dinners and stuff. And you get that one person who looks at me kind of being all hyper and all over the place. And they kind of say something like, oh, you know what? You have to excuse my friend Phil here. Um, uh, he's on TV. So he acts like this. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I go, listen, listen, listen you got it wrong. Uh -uh, I, don't act, I don't act like this because I'm on TV. I'm on TV because this is who I am. Yes, exactly. You know That's what I mean? You. They, yeah. they, they stop and they go, you know, yeah. he's, he's just acting like this because he's one of those TV guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> I did the same thing when I was in like high school. Sure. You know? I just didn't have an audience. No, I didn't, no, take that back. I did have an audience. I didn't get paid for it. There That's you go. The there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but no, they, it literally, it was just, you know, she started some, I did like a, I did like a commercial for SeaWorld and I did a, uh, uh, a commercial for like the, the, the yellow pages and it was like little things like that. Mm -hmm. And then she sent me out and I got an audition for a TV show finally. And um, Nick Arcade was the first TV show that I ever auditioned for. Wow. It was the first 
acting, not acting, it was the first hosting thing that I'd ever done in my life. It was the first time I'd ever read for anything that would be in front of the camera. And I, and I, and I got it. I mean, it wasn't easy, but I ended, I ended up getting booked on the gig. So, uh-huh. so that's why, so season one, so season one is the season that I, that I go, I'm sorry, everybody, really, it was my first time. Because like, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, y'all. Right. I seriously didn't know what I was doing. So you play video games? I got a Coleco vision. Okay, great. <laughs> you're gonna have to know all of these. Coleco, absolutely. Dude, you're gonna have to know all of these terms. That's why to this day, you know the biggest cringe thing when I watch old episodes of Nick Arcade. What's the that? biggest cringe thing, not them damn sweaters. No, not the sweaters. Oh, um, I, love, I love the sweaters. Absolutely. The biggest, the, cringe, glasses. <laughs> the biggest cringe thing for me is I re- I pronounce Doctor Robotnik Doctor Roboneck. I'm going to have to go back and watch that now. I don't remember that. Oh, dude. I mean, did you get some hate mail? No, 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 no. I mean, if they did, I no one no one said it to me. But it was like, now, fast forward to 2021. And I go, oh, man, it's Dr. Robotnik, man. There's at least, <laughs> there's at least four episodes where I go Dr. Robotnik. Oh, man. Oh, I was young and I needed the money, man. <laughs> Jesse, put Ryan's comment up real quick. It's perfect. Okay. And you were just right. Wait, yo, Ryan, Ryan, here you go. Let's adjust the score and play some more. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. So, I dropped my little writing thingy. <laughs> so that's another thing that we, you know, and we had discussed this earlier is that one thing that got you the job was not only your, 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 how charismatic you were and how much energy you had, but it was also about how you interacted with the kids. And it was neck and neck with you and another host. And you ended up winning out because of the relationship you formed with the kids. And yeah. So- um, yeah. I, 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 when I look now that, now that we're all like, you know, older gentlemen and we're all, you know, doing other things i got together with the creators of nick arcade uh and we were sitting around one day just eating some pizza having having a beer and i said hey guys you know now i'm a, now that i'm a producer i've been on the other side of the uh the uh the casting thing and i'm looking at people from time to time for shows that i'm producing and you know it's interesting things that i look for why did you choose me? Did I really like, you know, I'm like, hey, did I really just blow everybody out of the water? Did I go in just like, what is it? Did I crush that mofo? And it went, well, no, not really. It was another guy. You and him were neck and neck, and he was really good. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, so like then, then as executive producers working in the, the, you know, casting the show, what made you finally decide on me? And they said, well, we got down to the final day, which is like the screen test. Mm-hmm. They took us in. They were still building this up for Nick Arcade. So we were um, doing a mock rehearsal with real kids that they had paid to, to you know, be my contestants. And uh, we were on the uh, set of Get the Picture. Uh, by the way, when people look at you on YouTube yeah. and they see um, they see somebody and they keep sending me, hey, Phil, someone else did Nick Arcade before you. No, people. <laughs> Every TV show in the world gets like a test pilot done. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do it before they cast the real cast. You know, somebody else was Captain Kirk before William Shatner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know, there was a different face on the 18 before Dirk Bennett. It was like, sometimes everything is not in place, but they want to do a pilot. And what they did was they got one of the producers, took him over to the set and get the picture, and he did a run through. So please stop telling me you discovered something, Columbus. You didn't discover America. That's the test pilot for the show. <laughs> um, but they took, but they had me, they had a, uh, the podiums built, some buzzers, and they had two kids. And what they said was this, the guys that created the show said, when the other guy came in, he was nailing it. We were in the control room loving this guy. He was like, we realized we made a good choice with this dude. He was crushing it. And like, you know, and even for uh, uh, screen auditions and screen tests, there are times we have to stop to change a camera battery, light goes out just to get breaks or whatever like that, you know, pee breaks. And they said, every time this, every time we would stop for any reason, this other guy would do, he would do like a brilliant take. And then we cut and we said, okay, we got five minute hold. See, look over his notes. He make sure he's pronouncing the name Robotnik. And he would get us. <laughs> He would make sure he was like doing it and he was, you know, he was making sure that he was in it. So when we were ready to go back, bam, he was on point so he could nail it. And I was like, wow, so, well, how did how did I get the job? And they go, well, you were doing a good job too. Don't get me wrong. We're not saying you were doing anything wrong. You weren't making mistakes. You weren't flubbing lines. But every time we stopped down and took a break, when you were up testing, 
you would put down your cards and you would go and sit with the kids and talk to them. I, and I, I said, so wait a minute. So I got the job, not for anything that you recorded on camera, but for everything that you didn't record on camera. Mm -hmm. They go, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great though. I mean, that's, that's again, just like the Dick Clark, it's just, it's an amazing story that you got these opportunities because you are who you are. And yes, the, the, sometimes the setup was maybe a right place, right time. But even with that said, it's you. You are yeah. the reason that you got these and people saw that, you know, saw that ability in you. And I think that's just fascinating. That, yeah. That's amazing. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I still say it has a lot to do with just how you treat people. Again, sure. I was just trying to, I was just trying to mingle with the kids because even test kids, I mean, they're nervous. The kids on the show were nervous and the, and the kids that we brought in just to help me do my screen test, they were nervous. So I would look over and see them kind of, you know, like, am I doing this right? Do I, it's cold in the studio. Is, it, is that strange lady going to shove her hand up my shirt to adjust my mic again? What's going on? You know? <laughs> And I can see that. So I would just kind of go over and I would just kind of chill with them because mm -hmm. like they see, because my, see, here's my thought. If they feel more comfortable with me, then even if I make a mistake, we have a rapport. Sure. You know, yeah. that, that was yeah. really, that was, that was the thing, you know, we have a rapport. So you don't have to be perfect. All you have to do in this particular case is be, you know, competent and entertaining. That's it. Not yeah. perfect. Just competent yeah. and entertaining, you know? And look, Nine-year-old John was captivated by Nick Arcade. Okay, ten-year-old <laughs> John, sorry. And uh, I mean, I was a gamer. I loved it. I loved the video challenges. I always yelled at the TV with the, especially when they were playing games like 1942. I'm like, how can you not get the high score? This is a this is a shoot 'em up scroller. Come on, guys. <laughs> I, or they'd be playing Sonic and they couldn't get that 50th ring. I'm like, it's right there. Get the ring. Uh, I I loved it though because I played these games and then yeah. i was watching other kids play them but the other piece of this was the technology to nick arcade and people have to understand this is 1991 everything was still analog we we haven't moved into digital yet and right. the technology that exists in that show was amazing the video zone the whole mikey game the fact that there were like 35 engineers on every episode pulling strings to make everything work in real time like it's, yeah. it, it's just crazy to to think about that tell us how that was hosting a show with all of that kind of going on in the background plus you're trying to manage the kids plus you're trying to hit your lines plus you're trying to hit your marks like it's just all at once you know well look see that that's why i still have a hard time like, like taking like, like credit for, for for stuff i mean you say what you say i appreciate your kind words i really do but like the show wouldn't exist without the people who invented a technology yeah to be on the show because that technology didn't exist Yep, yep. Um, these two guys, uh, James Bethea and Karim Metef, they were buddies from high school. They went through college together. They're nerds to be heard, man. And they, they, they were working and they were working with computers, uh, in computers in their infancy. They were building their own motherboards and stuff. And they just so happened to be guys that had a head for producing. They had done other stuff at Nickelodeon, but it was, behind, you know, again, producing other shows. So they had an idea. Basically, it's like, hey, man, we invented this thing that glows. Uh, one, one if we can use this thing that glows on a show. You know, that's yeah. at, at the place where we work. And so they invented this technology. And here's the simplest way to describe it. The way the video zone worked was this. You know how if you have a desktop computer, you have your computer mouse, mm -hmm. okay? And you, you scroll it around on the mouse pad. That then makes this little arrow move around and do things. So you mm -hmm. can click subscribe. You see what I did there, guys? You know what yeah. I did for you guys? Okay. Yeah. So you, you take the mouse and you move it around. And by moving this thing way over here with this hand, it causes something else. And it doesn't just move. It can interact. You put that, you put that arrow in the right place and click and something activates. You can interact and affect change on your screen by moving this thing around. James and Karim wrote a program that makes the human being think it's the arrow. A human being can move on its own, doesn't need a hand to move it. A human being can move on its own. All you have to do is program the screen to go, when you get your hand here, something happens. When you get your hand over there, something happens. Just like with the mouse, you put your, your the arrow there, click, something happens. They wrote a program from nothing to make the trick the computer into thinking a human being 
was the cursor. So that was, that's what makes Nick Arcade work. That was going to wow. be my question was, was the hit detection. So when they jump up and they touch a coin or maybe they jump up and hit a bird and take a life uh, piece of life off, that software was running the whole time. It wasn't an engineer clicking the button to no, say, okay, no, no, they're going, no, it was it's all really, natural in the exactly. software. Like again, think about this. This thing you're watching YouTube. You're watching YouTube, and it's a small screen. You want to hit the ring the bell. The bell when the screen is small is 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 over here. But then when you hit the button to make the screen wide, the bell is now over here. But if you click it, no matter where it's positioned, it's still going to do the same thing. Gotcha. That's amazing. They, they wrote that, that. They wrote that in 1989. Yeah. Perfected it in 1990, and then we started shooting a show. That's a, that's amazing to have that show built up around that technology because obviously that was for the most part everybody's favorite part. I mean that was mine. You got to see the athleticism of the kids and it was mm -hmm. really cool the different video zone levels and the different villains. Um, the my favorite part though was actually the video challenge, as I said before, because I'm I'm a gamer and while I'd love to go into the video zone, I know I probably would have embarrassed myself, but I was pretty agile as a kid, so maybe I would have done good. I don't know, but I can assure you, I would have nailed all those wizard challenges on the videos on the video. <laughs> challenge. so, video challenges here today. Jesse and John are gonna play. <laughs> oh man, and I'm telling you right now, if I was there and they had Joe and Mac on Super Nintendo, I would have not only picked oh. that, but I would have dominated that. Uh, I yeah. was always jealous of some of the games that the kids got to play, whether it was a game I was good at or a game I never played, but I really wanted. But maybe a friend had mm -hmm. it, or you know, maybe I mm -hmm. didn't. So do you think that those challenges really were attainable or do you think that there might have been some that were off just to make sure that the, that the kids weren't always winning for, for, the, for the game and the dramatics? And, and well, everything? I mean, look, they, they didn't want to make it super, super easy so that it was just a cakewalk. But yeah. it, I, I think I think it, there's a couple of things that I, I think came into play. Um, and it's mm -hmm. weird. You have to kind of go back. You got to set the way back machine and go back in time and put yourself in the doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> put yourself not just in the mindset of the 90s. Because see, a lot of people who are familiar with Nick Arcade watched it in its reruns in the late 90s. They watched it yeah. later on mm -hmm. in Gas. You know, now and now people who are in their 30s and 40s are watching it on what Paramount Plus now. But like, but the back in the day, it's kind of like. Here's a perfect example. I'm going. I'm going to geek out for you guys. I'm gonna go down in the nerdatorium for you two. Remembering Back to the Future when okay. when Marty made a comment about like, yeah, we've got two TVs, and the guy went, nobody has two TVs. Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody. It was because in 1995, you got a TV in your bathroom. You got a TV in your car. <laughs> you got a TV. You know, you got a little. You know, you know, your little game gear is a TV. You know, everything it was a, could be a TV. Got a TV in the living room. Got a TV in the family room. Got a TV in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. But in 1955, the technology was not that available to folks. So if you had a TV, you had one. Yep. So what I'm saying is not everybody had video games. True. Very true. It was new and people wanted it. You had to wait till your family dragged you to Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, wait, until they drag you to showbiz. Thank you. The better place <laughs> for showbiz. Until Absolutely. they took you to showbiz, till they took you to Discovery Zone. Oh, the <laughs> <You know? laughs> I forgot about Discovery Zone. I love you know that. what I'm saying? Or, or you went over to your friend's house whose mom and dad both had a job and they could afford <laughs> the, the nice couple, the two or three systems. Yeah. But like, it wasn't like every everybody had the best and up to date systems, and they weren't out going out buying games. You had little stinky eight bit games that cost the same as these really cool games now that are in four K. You know what I mean? It's like you, you, you still had to you still had to pay thirty nine ninety nine for burn, burn, You know, it was kind <laughs> of pricey. It wasn't a readable thing. It wasn't readily available to everybody, and not that many people, uh, not that many people had them. Had them. So, so it's so you know you got to think like the reason why a lot of people came onto the show, um, and didn't know how to play the games well is the last time they probably played it was like at their cousins over the summer when they went to visit them in Michigan. But when they got back home, they didn't have one. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, so very true. You know, very true. I, I kind of like to give them, you know. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. Wait, but, but Ryan, what do you want to say? Here? Ryan wants to say something. Uh, he says he don't want to interrupt the convo. But yo, what's up? What's going on? What do you want, Ryan? Talk to us. Well, Drop it in the well, comments. We, we actually, we have a surprise for you, Phil. Oh, Which is on the show. 
It's Ryan. What's up, dude? Hey. Ryan. <laughs> How you doing, man? It's good, man. It's good to see you. I'm really stoked. Good to that see you, you too, man. Got your head, head on in here. Come on, Ryan. You, you, you got me we dancing out you at here. The, the Discovery Zone uh, theme song is now going through my head. <laughs> Crawling through. You had to get the knee pads so your oh. jeans would get all torn up. Or I can have oh. fun on my own. <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I wanted to pop in and say hey real quick. Dude, it's man. It's good to see you, buddy. <laughs> oh, so, my God. Uh, the way that we actually all met Phil, I'll make this very quick, was Ryan does a yearly show. He does the Huge Huge Holiday Show, which the is huge, always huge a for charity. And in uh, in uh, 2016, Phil was the main guest feature. And on the show, we created a makeshift Nick Arcade uh, with a set with podiums and games and challenges and quizzes and everything. And uh, wait, but wait, but wait, but wait, but even better, the best part, we played this game with drunk grown-ups. We did, we did, and it was great. And uh, I'm just gonna say, <clears throat> you truly won the whole thing. So you know that was uh, that was a great moment. Not only, not only did I get to meet Phil Moore, but I got to act on stage with Phil Moore, and then I got to win the Nick Arcade with Phil Moore. It was literally Phil, literally dream come true that night. It was, oh, it was amazing, amazing. Well, it was, it was. Just a fun night for me. Everybody was cool. You two were dope. Uh, the people were uh, like insane. I still have great memories with them. And then, do you remember this? I freaked out because I had been living in California for a while. Walked outside and it was snowing. There was snow on the ground. <laughs> you got you were going. Oh, it's Fillmore, and I'm going. It's snow. <laughs> 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 a true story, absolute true story. And then we went to White Castle on Sunday, and that was an amazing oh, meal. <laughs> got some murder burgers, man. Yep. Nothing like some White Castle murder burgers when you're nursing Absolutely. a little bit of hangover. Oh, Dang. and we got that egg foo young at that Chinese food place right by your hotel that was like to die for, man. That was because I can't spot. get because I can't get good I can't get good egg foo young here in L.A. Yeah, yep. man, that was good. That was fun times, man. That was, that was a great really time. really fun. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. and I don't for... know. I don't know if that was your first, second, third, or whatever. But man, it was epic as hell. That's hey, what's up. Thanks. We, yeah, we I, had I a ton of fun. Year, year se seven. Year seven. Yeah. I think. Wow. Like yeah, because wow. two thousand nine was the first one, right? Or was it two thousand eight? Two thousand eight. Okay, gotcha. I've lost yep. track. I have to count on my fingers now. Right? <laughs> Doing uh, the math uh, equations going right? in the background like that oh. gift. Like, one, two, uh, I, I hate when you get the number 11. Them pants are going to drop, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, it was epic. Tom was in the audience, and any time I went to play a game for a video challenge, I had a Superman hoodie on. I'd put my hood up, and Tom Balin was right there next to me cheering me on, man. It was so great. <laughs> I could not have done it without Tom. Tom, you were instrumental <laughs> in my success that night. Oh. Oh, man, yeah, here's, here's the first thing. Tom not only was instrumental in, like, you know, encouraging you, but you were right. You were so nervous. I think he was the one that stopped you from peeing your pants. Because <laughs> you, you were, dude, you were, you were one, man, you were one game away from need the pens. I swear, <laughs> man. You were... Well, I was upset when I fubbed Contra because normally <laughs> I can beat level one no problem. But as soon as I've got 150 people behind me, then I mess up somehow. So, you know. And then I messed up Battletoads, which I'm phenomenal at that game. I messed that one up, too. I was very upset. But, hey, yeah. I still won it, yeah. so it's all yeah. good. Yeah, but, but you see, though, look, back, back to talking about the kids on the show, you see how when you're in front of an audience trying to do a simple yeah. little game, there's yeah. a whole different level of pressure. You're a absolutely whole right. different level of pressure. You're, you're like, you blaze at home, no problem. You get people yelling and screaming behind you, like, oh, shut yeah, up. Yeah, like, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> but I think that brings up a really good point that we were discussing earlier with the kids. And, you know, it's fun as adults to look back and be like, oh, that kid sucked, or what was he doing? Da da da. But you got to put yourself in their shoes. You're 12 years old. There's TV cameras in front of you. There's an audience. You're on a set. There's hosting. You're doing all these things. And you're 12. Like, right. how do you yeah. think people are going to react? Right. You know, so. I don't like to give the kids a hard time anymore. Oh, yes, you do. Don't lie. Oh, anymore. It's still, okay. Like, okay, look, anymore. there's still where you're just like, <laughs> why are like, like the kid on Legends of the Hidden Temple that couldn't get out of the cave of slides. It's like, mm. come on, man. The button's right there. You know, <laughs> you spent three minutes in the well, same look, room. Look, I, I can't speak for the kids on Legends of the Hidden Temple. I think that some <laughs> of them, I think some of them came in high. I don't know. I just know that. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Kirk and I are friends. Okay. But, <laughs> but <laughs> Nick Arcade, we're doing drug tests. Legend of <laughs> Hidden Temple, they're rolling doobies. 
Uh, you're gonna, <laughs> that, that's you're gonna be the purple parrots. All right, here, take that. There you go. All right, hang on. Hang on. You're the green oh. iguanas. Here, you take this over here. <laughs> remember, remember, pump, pump, pass. <laughs> That's the only way that you get through the temple games is they got to smoke up first. <laughs> I mean, you want me to jump on this pedestal? Uh, all right, I got this. Let's go. <laughs> but um, but uh, so I, I, here's my here's my a, a example of what it was like to be a 12, 13, 14 year old on on Nick Arcade. All right, so first of all, the day before yesterday, you were just at middle school, or you were just at high school, then. You know, imagine now kids don't like to stand up and do oral reports in front of their own peers. Yeah. So now you're being the next thing you find yourself, somebody is, first of all, I don't know about y'all, but when I was a 14 year old boy, the idea of somebody putting makeup on me, coming made me go, no. I mean, you know, if that's what you do now, fine. But when I was a 14 year old boy, I'm being brought into a room with a bunch of strangers and somebody goes, let me put this powder on your face. I'm like, no, I like being a black man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they, they, they bring they bring in these kids and then they're in a room full of different people. They send them into another room and they go, take off the clothes you came in with and put these on. Then when you come out wearing a stranger's outfit, then somebody takes their cold, ice cold studio hands and they shove them up your shirt to put on your little microphone and they hook it on there. Then they put a battery pack on your back so it looks like you're, you're carrying around half a Batman's load. I'm like, what, do I have a grappling hook back here? What the hell is that? And I'm like, no, that's your battery pack. Really? Well, I'm not scaling a damn building. I'm just gonna go play some games. Right. You know? so, now you're, so now you're wearing this back, this thing on your face. You're wearing somebody else's clothes. Somebody has put makeup on you. And if you're a girl, somebody put makeup on you, not in the way you did it. You know what I mean? Like, you you know, I mean, if you put on makeup, boy or girl, you put on the lips right, you put on the eyes right, they just gotta, boom, we gotta get that shine off your face. We gotta put this, we gotta smooth it out. We gotta smooth it out. Now go out there to the person with the cold hands and let them dig up your clothes. And that person digs up your clothes. Then another one gives you a grappling hook. And then when you finally come walking through those big blue doors onto the sound stage, Peep, there's like 400 people screaming because the audience warm up guy is doing his thing. And then there's, you know, the, the lights are down kind of low because they, they lower them to keep the, the temperature down. And then when it's time to go, boom, it's like you're a Wendy burger sitting there waiting for somebody to buy you under that like heat lamp. And then, <laughs> and then you have the ADD rid Riddling child in front of you going, how you doing? How you doing? Do you want to play it? Do you want to play it? And yet, and yet, all along, they're supposed to act natural. Right. It ain't nothing natural about that at all. No. <laughs> you know? That's the experience of being a kid on a game show. That's, a, that's the experience of being a kid on, on Nick Arcade. And so if they seemed a little like not really there, that was their day. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know? it's definitely understandable. And it was yeah. always funny to see, like, some of the pairings, they, they worked really well together. You could tell there was, like, teamwork. And then there were others you could tell they just were not, like, yeah. feeling it with each other at all, you know? No discussion, yeah. no, no partnering or, you know, anything. So well, it was interesting to see those dynamics as well. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I sat down, uh, not named Robin, just it is a real thing. I sat down a, a couple years ago, was talking with, with Joey Fatone from NSYNC. Because he, he was, was a contestant, yeah. yeah, he was on, and so that's how I got to know him. And now you know, we're all grown up, and 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 we 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 still keep in contact. But we were sitting down talking one time, and I was talking to him about like his experience on the show. As a matter of fact, this is something I'm really seriously thinking about doing, because people ask me about the kids all the time, and I always I, I go, look, I don't know. I was a grown up, you know. I don't know what you know what it was like for them, and then after you know looking back and now working with kids still from time to time at Nickelodeon as yeah. a producer, I see what they go through. But I would love to do like a show like this where I talk to former contestants. That and would then, be fantastic. And then really? they can answer all the questions that you guys, like you guys keep asking me how they get the contestants. I don't know. I was busy trying to learn my line. Yo, Ryan, talk to you later, man. Thanks hey, for Ryan, popping in, dude. Popping in. You know, um, but you know, it would be great to get it from their actual mouths what the experience is like, what was the process? I got to find that out a little bit talking with Joey 
And I was asking him about his experience. And he said, well, the thing that he was like a little bit bent out of shape with was they decided they were going to pair him up with this girl. And she seemed like a nice girl with like the day before. They knew that they were going to be a team. But she had went out and done something like the night before. And when she came for the day of shooting the show, she had lost her voice. Oh. Ooh. So like when she talked, she was like, hi. Oh, and so he's like, so he said, honestly, I was a little annoyed at first, you know? <laughs> then that kind of takes your head out of the game because mm -hmm. part of your brain is, and now you have to answer everything. And so it was kind of, it was kind of interesting actually talking to a contestant and kind of like getting inside their head uh, about what it was like. And I've thought about this, literally. I thought about doing it and then pandemic hit, but I thought it probably it would be fun to sit down and do like a round table with, with, with former contestants. Hmm. Because would. everybody says the same thing. I was yelling at the screen. What were they thinking? What was going through <laughs> your mind? And I can sit there and go, I don't, I don't know. I was trying to read Dr. Roboneck. I don't know. What <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I love that idea. And if you put that together, I will absolutely watch it. I'll watch it live <laughs> or however you put it together. I, I will be there. I think that would be fantastic. And it would be to your point, you know, we're kind of getting the, the look from your perspective, but getting the look from their perspective kind of then completes the total package. Yeah. Well, I mean, you see the thing is you're getting the look from my perspective. You keep asking me about what they thought. I don't right. know. I, I got to meet one other person who was on the show, a guy named Ruben. He is the audience warm up guy for uh, family feud. Oh, uh, he, okay. was a, he was a contestant on Nick Arcade and, and he uh, is now, you know, he, he travels with Steve Harvey. He does, you know, whatever show Steve Harvey's doing, he's the warm up guy for him. I think he's also done like the Kelly Clarkson show. He's a warm up guy here in LA. He does a ton of stuff, but he was a contestant on the show. And so we got to talk a little bit, just a little bit about like what it was like, you know, for him. And again, it's all like, it's all fascinating hearing it from, again, every question that people like you keep asking me. I don't know. So it's kind of, I think it'd be kind of cool to, 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 to open the door and let them talk about what it was like, you know? There it is. Tom, excellent idea. Yo, wow, that'd be really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Because, you know, the last thing I did during the pandemic is there's a show on Amazon Prime and Twitch. It was a conjoint thing called Chasing the Crown. So like the evolution has come. I was working with like, you know, top gamers, like, you know, ammunition and a whole bunch of folks oh, like wow. that who are like huge gamers. And here I am now producing uh, another, uh, producing a video game show for Twitch that you can now, like I said, watch it on Amazon Prime also. So that would be awesome. Great idea, Tom, like to do the evolution, it's, you know, from, from Pong to guys inventing technology that didn't exist to do a show to the people that are out there, you know, doing stuff now. That'd be great. I love that. That's a, that's a fantastic that's a, idea. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I kind of want to wrap Nick arcade here. Cause I know we're kind of running short on time, but this has been a great yeah. discussion. I want to know from you, Phil, out of everything with the experience of Nick arcade, if you could only pick one thing that was just, that was just the best experience with that whole piece, what would you say that would be? Um, it's going to sound kind of weird, but Go it ahead. was, the live tour version of the oh, show. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, Double Dare had been on tour for a while. Extremely successful tour. Remember that. Um, Remember that. And, 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 it would go, go so bad. My parents it, were like, yeah. <laughs> it, would go to, it would go to stadiums. It would go to mm -hmm. arenas, that kind of yep. thing. And so they were thinking, well, you know, now we have more shows. I mean, when Double Dare was doing it, Double Dare was the big cookie on the show at the time. But now you've had shows like, you know, Nick Arcade. You'd had Guts. You had Legends. Um, they've done smaller touring shows, like where they brought the cast from Wild and Crazy Kids, and they would do a fun little show at an amusement park where maybe 300 people could sit in a the little theater they have at a new. But yeah. they wanted to do another, like, you know, stadium size show, like Double Dare used to do. So the powers that me put together, Mike and I, and took a few gains from What Would You Do, Wild and Crazy Kids, and mixed it all in. And we did a two hour show that would, that would, it called the Nick Live Tour. And, and I remember that. The, the thing that was really, like, I got to tell you, this is like, honestly, I've done a lot of great things. I've been a very, very fortunate man. Seriously. Even the stuff that I'm doing now, it's amazing that I'm, I'm doing what I love to do. And I'm still now back in the world of games. But the thing that, um, um, that, that blew my mind about that tour was we had done a show at Madison Square Garden. It's a show that's for families and kids to come up on stage and do 
games from Guts, Nick Arcade, and, and, a, and a host of other shows on Nickelodeon. We played Madison's, we sold out Madison wow. Square Garden. Oh, and then the next true. day, the next day, the, the, the headline in the entertainment section of the New York Times was a picture of Mike and I, you know, one of our publicity shots, you know, and it yeah. said, it said, Phil Moore and Michael Malley are rock and roll for kids. And I was wow. like, and I, stopped, and I got to tell you, man, I'd walk out on that stage, man. And it was like, it was like, it was like, it wasn't just the fact that you were dealing with the people live. Cause you did that when you did big helps and Nick takes over your schools and, yeah, and, yeah. and, and he was like, you know, you would be, but it was something you hear, you hear singers talk about that. You walk out on stage, you go, how you doing? And then 26,000 people go, <laughs> dude, that's like, I just guzzled five Red Bulls right there. You know? <laughs> right. And yet, and yet I didn't have to go out and sing. I didn't have to go out and make sure that I hit the right notes. I went out and just still hosted the same kind of fun games that I did in this small little studio with 400 people. But this time I'm doing it in this giant arena and I've got like, uh, uh, you know, a, a, you know, 30, 30 stage crew uh, backing us up um, in, in front of 26,000 people. Um, if I could go back and do that sort of thing again, if I had that sort of energy and that kind of situation like could happen again, oh my gosh, I'd stop what I'm doing right now to like do those kind of things. It was so much fun. It was so, now I understand now why we're like, you know, you get an artist, you know, like that's why the Rolling Stones do. That's why Paul McCartney still plays. He's 150 right. years old. You know why though, when you walk out on the stage, you go, hello America, how are you? And they go, <laughs> five Red Bulls, five Red Bulls. That's what it feels like. <laughs> it's a great feeling, man. It, it, it really is. It, it truly is. And that's a that's an experience that clearly you're going to have forever, which is just fantastic. And just one of the many things that you've done. Um, now, you also did a little bit of producing with G4. I'll say back in yeah. the day, because for but a lot of kids, G4 is still kind of current. For me, it's back in the day because I started with Tech TV. Oh, rip Tech TV wants you to come back so bad. But anyways, let's move on from that. So you did some producing and you produced on X Play, if I'm not mistaken, right? Are we back? Oh, I think I think I think we froze Phil. Nope. You're back. Is he? Or maybe he's just frozen on my end. He's right, he's got his angry face where it's frozen for me too. He's frozen on my end as well. Okay. Well, we'll give it a second here and uh, see if we can get Phil back. Uh, hey, good thing that this technical difficulty happened at the very end of the show instead of at the beginning. Uh, so, uh, Jesse, so what do you think about Phil's story in terms of how he kind of came up from doing stand-up comedy to kind of crowd warm up to then impressing Dick Clark and having the ability then to experience you know, expand his career up in television. Tom said it best. It's a very uplifting show tonight. For me, I felt like I've kind of taken a back seat as being the viewer of this a little bit because I'm enthralled and fascinated by uh, his up his his origin story, how he came to be, who he is, and what he yeah. is. I mean, and, and it's very rare you see somebody you know as big as he is and still be the most down-to-earth human being. Absolutely. You know, I mean, this guy, I mean, Phil from, you know, he's got the, he, he, you know, the world's in front of him. world's in front of him. He's got it. You know what I mean? And and he has everything a comic would dream of having. And, and it's crazy because I've met enough comics in the day uh, where, you know, they, they can have it and not, and they, they're not happy still, you mm -hmm. know, for some You're reason. Right. I mean, they're not, they're, and, you know, they're not acknowledging the great thing they have. You know, Phil, Phil's living in the moment. He's living in the yeah. present, and it's, and it's I, I'm, I envy it. I envy and it he, so much. he continues to live in the moment, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what's so important. And the other thing... And the other thing I think is important is that Phil loves his fans. He loves people. Oh, yeah. He loves what he's doing, and he's not going to stop, which, yeah. which is great to have that drive and that ambition, but also that passion. A lot of times with life, we lose our passion, right? We mm -hmm. not necessarily, we lose our way, but we lose that passion. If, if you've ever seen um, one of my favorite comedies, which is you, me and Dupree, 
uh, Owen Wilson, the whole thing is, is he becomes a motivational speaker. It's all about the Ness. It's your name plus Ness. And Phil's Ness, he's never lost it. Phil Mm -hmm. has always had his Ness, and he always will have his Ness. And not only is that contagious, but it's also inspiring and motivating. Because you see somebody who did it. Phil yeah. went out there and he mm-hmm. did it, right? And Phil did it. And if Phil can do it, I can do it. And you can do it. And anybody else can do it. It's mm-hmm. just very motivating. It's very positive. And I've really enjoyed knowing Phil over the years. Like I said, the first time we went was at Ryan's show. Oh, man, we're coming up on uh, five years ago. And, you know, just how genuine he is. We had the best time on Sunday. We went to White Castle. We went vintage shopping to try to find clothes he wore on Nick Arcade from the 90s. We <laughs> went to my buddy's used video game store, Warp Zone and Hilliard. Check him out. And Darren, the store owner, had a blast. Phil ran around the store, looked at all the games, took pictures. He got a hoodie. It was just, it was, it was just like a great weekend. It just felt like two friends hanging out. And that's the kind of guy that Phil is. And mm. we need more people like Phil in the world to make it. I, a place. I could not agree uh, anymore. Um, I couldn't agree anymore. I mean, literally, just hearing your story, man. It, it I was like I said. To the, uh, I'm still like, wow, wow. You mean and 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 he credits kindness. Yes. Which is very interesting. I don't see a lot of people you know credit kindness no. to being uh the crux of success. But he's, it, he's absolutely right. Treat people the way you want to be treated, and it's going to lead to more positive outcomes. Man. Stop trying to be adversarial on everything and let's focus on working together instead of drawing divisions between us yeah like well they got really deep jesse (laughs) yeah no no that's why i put up uh that comment i was like this is this is a different type of episode we had today so i'm very excited that yeah we had this episode i'm not sure if phil is gonna be joining us again or not uh not sure. I don't see him. He, I don't think he's backstage. Oh, 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 he's coming back. He's coming back. Is he coming back? We hey, we will. We will get to hey. conclude. Phil. Hey, there he is, Phil. Yay! Back. Okay, so look, here's what's up, guys. Here's what's up, guys. The um, the I, I all of a sudden things went weird, and it happened once before since you know been in the world of uh of uh of uh you know streaming from home. And what happened is this freaking look. I'm gonna show you guys. Look, I'm gonna show you right outside the darn window. This guy's pissing me off. Look at this. Look at this. Look. Look. <laughs> Freaking spectrum guys. Uh, hey, let's start working on the, let's start working on the Wi-Fi now. That's what the <laughs> doing now. Phil's talking to John and Jesse. Let's talk now. So uh so what just so open what up I the window and stand off the Wi-Fi the show here, guys. <laughs> I'm shooting here. Right? Yeah. So uh what I did was I uh I, I turned off my computer and uh I turned the Wi-Fi off of my phone and just uh I'm using you know my phone now. So there we go. Beautiful. We're glad you were able to come back, Phil. We're going to get ready to wrap up. So I have bad news. We we had such a good time talking with you today that we didn't get into Star Wars, but we're going to rectify that, Phil, because we're going to have you back on a show where we do nothing but Star Wars. And maybe we'll get a couple other fans that we know. Ah. And we're going to sit down in a round table ah, and we are going to do Star Wars. All right? Is that a deal? All right. That's a deal, right. man. That's a deal. Perfect. <laughs> well, Phil, we're going to wrap up today because we are out of time. That old clock on the wall is beeping at me, telling me, John, you're over. You're over. Here's your light. And I continue to talk. So, Phil, do you have any last words for everybody watching tonight? Um, You know, I think I may have said it all already. Look, everybody, uh, I, I say this and, and whenever I meet people, uh, like, you know, just in public, and I mean it sincerely, 90s fans, 90s Knicks fans are the best in the world. Only reason, like, I'm even here is because y'all have shown y'all love over all of these years. You watch the show, and I really appreciate it. I really appreciate y'all. Just remember what I said earlier. Just make sure, like, you know, try to be kind to people, man. You never know how your own words, what effect it'll have on somebody's life. And if people do that back to you, it can change yours for the better, too. And don't look at something that's like, don't look at a big pile of elephant shit as a bad thing. <laughs> it might <laughs> lead you to your life for the better. <laughs> it might lead to you hosting one of the greatest uh, game shows of all time. 
And, and I have to say, when say you, were again, off, you were you were clicking. Oh, I was just going to say that elephant pile shit might lead to you hosting one of the greatest game shows of all time. So you definitely want to go to that elephant. Exactly. Shit. You never know. Exactly. Never know. You never know what weird thing what direction it'll take your life in. And if you look at it positively, then it could honestly turn out to be something fantastic. Totally agree. Jesse, and, why don't you go ahead and round us out for this show? It's been a fantastic well, I I wanted to say something real quick because the audience said, it, well, uh, and I said it when Bill was off, uh, you know, Bill, uh, a lot of our uh, audience members right now are saying that this is probably one of the most uplifting episodes we have ever had. Yeah. I mean, hearing your story was incredible. I felt that I kind of fell out of my co-hosting duty and became an active listener. Just <laughs> hearing you and and hearing your event, <laughs> but also what was amazing, as I as I mentioned, was that you you know you credited kindness as being the crux of success, which you don't hear anybody do anymore. You know that kindness is that simple, yeah. that easy, and it, it can take you far. So I, I just. You know, I, 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 you know, we all have our projects we're all doing, but hearing that right now in the midst of all my stuff, it, it gave me some, uh, it kind of good chi is to speak. You know I mean, so thank you so much. I just wanted to say, uh, look, I, I, you're welcome. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about what, what, what has happened to me. People have thrown yep. it my way and I've seen it, I've seen it work miracles. So, yeah. I Absolutely. love it, Bill. And we're definitely going to pay it forward as well. Well, de- yes, we will. All right, so let's. Uh, right. so I want, oh, sorry, oh, Phil. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think we lost the business audio. calls. There Bye, everybody. Is. See you, John. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Phil, Hello? for being on the show. We greatly appreciate it. Hello? Thank you so much, and we will see you on the Star Wars episode. Oh, there he is. There he is. Right. See you, Phil. <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye, Phil. Bye, Phil. All right. That All was right, Jesse. Bill Moore, everybody. Thank Bill Moore. Thank Close you. Mouth, buddy. Bill. Make sure you go to his page. Go check him out. Like him. He's doing a lot of great stuff. And like I said, we talked so much. We got nostalgic. We got backstory. We got origin with this uh, episode. So definitely we are going to bring him back. And I think I think uh, our, in our comment section said it best. And that is... We need a part two, and that's what we're going to be. We, we will have a part two. And part before two. we wrap up, I just want to say, check out Phil Moore in our favorite Christmas movie, Ernest Saves Christmas. He's the crazy guy in the jail cell. Yep, that's right. Go check him out. I did not know that. I'm yeah, to- now, now your mind's blown, isn't it? My mind is blown. There My mind is. is absolutely blown, so thank you. But anyways, I want to thank Phil Moore for joining us. I want to thank everybody in the comment section lighting it up. I'm talking Tom. I'm talking Ryan. I'm talking other Ryan. Um, <laughs> we got two Ryans, Ryan Francis, and then we got Ryan Hillsman. Uh, then I want to thank, uh, let's see, Darth also as well. Uh, thank you so much, everybody who just listened, who liked, who subscribed, who shared the link. Thank want to give a much. shout out to my man, King Jordan, and also Josh. Thank you for watching. Yeah, shout outs to all of you. And uh, right now, uh, t- keep an eye on the Facebook page. Uh, right now, a lot of things are happening. So our, our show schedule is just uh, a little up in the air at the moment. Uh, but we will uh, we'll let you guys know. Yeah, we'll let you guys know. Essentially, good stuff is happening for opportunities for both of us. So we will keep you updated. So make sure you check out like at the Grown Ups Table on Facebook, and uh, you'll get more news from there. But I also want to give a quick shout out to Vance, the producer, also who produces the goods, you know what I mean? And I would also like to everybody, if you can, if you're still listening, give a happy birthday shout out to John. All right, come on. Oh, no, man, no, 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 man. <laughs> <laughs> give it up for him, man. Oh. Give it up. Just love his way if you haven't already. But uh, I, we're going to wrap up. Until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you, and have an awesome night, everybody. Take care, everyone. Good night, everybody.